<laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thought I'd pop in for a little bit of an impromptu um, discussion with you guys. Thought I'd share something really different with you today, and I wanted to know what you think about that uh, when I share it, because it's going to be uh, quite controversial for me, I suppose, but I thought we'd have a, a different discussion about where Canon is going and where Sony's going and things like that. Um, but I'm going to give it a few minutes. I put down um, 4.30 Melbourne time, so we've got around about four minutes or so, five minutes. So let's just uh, say hi in the chat. So if you're here, please say hi in the chat. So we've got Sizzleman. Uh, if they are not topping the specs of the A7 III, then it must be a pea shooter. <laughs> oh, no. You guys, honestly. Cody says, hi, David. Ben says, yo, g'day, Ben. Good to see you in here for a change. Three Trees says, you look crystal clear. Woohoo! Um, Johnny Boy says, morning from the UK. G'day, Johnny Boy. Um, Canon about to slam the market share. Click on the table with five lenses and second body. Super impressive given the time frame. Um, I'm going to talk about that new release in a minute because I think it's interesting. Uh, Snooper says hi in the chat. Wolfpack says hi David. Uh, Norik says hello Mr. David. It's my bedtime but I'll watch your show. I don't know how long this is going to go. I mean it's uh, just like an impromptu. I just saw this sort of shared today. And I thought I'd go through it with you, just a different spin. Uh, love competition, as you all know. Uh, so I thought I'd talk to you about some things in the Canon world that may add a bit of competition for Sony. Um, Christian saying, good morning, everyone. Jolly says, hi, from Hawaii. David's saying, hello, as well. Lucas is saying, camera conspiracy has sent me <laughs> the M8. Um, Andre says, hi, from Romania. Chris says, hello, David. Nice day in Los Angeles. Good Corona day. It certainly is. It's hot here today. Um, what else? Dwayne says, hello, freezing in San Francisco. I need to join your Patreon group. Please do, Dwayne. It's there waiting for you. Um, Susso said, greetings from California. Um, Abjilt says, hi, from India. So we're getting quite a few. Like I said, we're just popping in. This is a bit of pre-show. Let me put that up there. Um, if you are joining a bit later, you can just scroll uh, to where the uh, Osler Images sign starts. Uh, we'll have another couple of minutes of pre-show, guys, and we'll start. So please say hi as you're coming in. Uh, Mr. Comic Studio says, uh, will it be better than the R, or is it the cheaper version? I'm going to talk about that all in a minute uh, for you, because it's an interesting, um, interesting sort of spec sheet there. Greetings from Guatemala. Uh, same to you, mate. Nice to see you in here. Uh, how's all your day been? I've done my live show this morning with Aaron, so if you haven't checked that out, uh, please go to Aaron's um, site, uh, YouTube channel, to watch that show that we did this morning. Next week, it'll be on my channel. Uh, but we had a great discussion this morning about the Panasonic uh, new releases. We also discussed some other great things that are being announced. We went through our uh, images, uh, things like that, and tips as well. We went through some great stuff this morning. Um, so say hi as you are popping into the chat guys, love you to say hi, please too if you can, love a thumbs up too because it'll let other people know that I'm actually live because like I said this wasn't scheduled, uh, so I'd love it if you could do that too. Scott said, hey it's an interesting spec sheet, well I'm going to talk about that in a minute Scott because I think it is very interesting, uh, particularly for the price, if it does come out like that it's going to be very very interesting to see what happens. Um, also, I did put, uh, Brett's saying hello as well. G'day, Brett. Uh, also, um, I did put out a video the other day talking about the new lenses that Canon were announcing as well, and they're quite exciting as well. Um, not cheap, though, but, you know, they still, uh, I do believe the Canon lenses are the best that's out there. Their new lenses, particularly for the RF line, uh, are incredible. Uh, it's just that they haven't had a body yet to justify those lenses. I'm sure that's going to come sometime this year. Uh, I'm sure we'll see a high-end version of that camera uh, coming soon. Um, congratulations to Brett on um, your Sony announcement here. It, I'm really proud of you, buddy. Uh, great job. Um, Altric's also saying, hey, g'day, Altric. How are you going? Good to see you in here. Uh, been admiring some of the images you've been sharing in uh, our Facebook page. 
uh, Photography Videography School. Don't forget to join that site, guys. Let me just pull that up while we're waiting. Um, let me see if I can go to it. If you haven't joined, um, please join this site, the Photography Videography School. Uh, you just have to type it in like that, Photography and Videography School. Uh, we're getting close to 4,000 members now, so it really is starting to grow. Um, like I said, I always put in pointers when I put stuff in. Uh, we also have so many people now sharing images in there. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's great. I mean, Aaron has shared this lovely image that he created in his Panasonic. This is not just about Sony, guys. This is open to anyone in photography. So don't believe you have to be a Sony shooter. I want this to be open to anyone. And I also want it to be a lot of video stuff as well as sharing your pages and everything else. There's so many pages out there on YouTube where you, they don't allow you to promote your business, to promote your YouTube channel, uh, to do all that sort of stuff, to promote your Instagram channel. I'm leaving this open for whatever you would like to share apart from go live to it. Uh, so I'd love you to um, join that if you haven't uh, joined it. Uh, so please join us in there. It's a really positive site. If anyone is a pain in the neck in there and being a bit of a prima donna, they're going to get booted. Um, so please join it because it, it's just fantastic. This is certainly too the best place where you can contact me as well um, and ask a question. A lot of people have been messaging me uh, as personal messages in Instagram and also through Facebook, but I would prefer you to do it through here because other people would also like to know those answers. So that's the reason why I'm saying if you can, please join the Photography Videography School and just share your stuff on there, guys, because um, you know it's a great positive place to share all of your work. Uh, all right, so I'm going to quit over to the um, to the side. Let me just click back here. Let me get rid of pre-show, and I'm going to bring up the logo, and we'll start the uh, show, guys. So bear with me. G'day everyone from Down Under, popping in for a bit of an impromptu uh, discussion with you all. I thought I'd share something different with you today, um, talking about the new Canon rumours uh, and how it might impact Sony, and I thought we could have a discussion about that. Uh, as you know, I do love competition, and I certainly welcome competition, uh, particularly because it also pushes Sony. Um, but uh, this is an interesting uh, camera that could, uh, that could come about if the rumours are true and I'm going to talk to you about that uh, very, very soon. Uh, remember, I would love this channel to be more not just about Sony, I'd love this channel now to be more about photography in general uh, and I think that's just a fantastic way to go. Remember there are other great options out there as well. I'm no way known am I going to dump Sony but it might be that there are other alternatives that I may use uh, as well. Plus, I'd just love you guys to come along the journey with me. Remember, this whole thing for me is more about art, uh, more than about any camera brand and stuff like that. So I love to share your other rumours that are around there. And as you know, I always tell the truth about what I think about things. Uh, so in some ways, it's fantastic that I'm not a link to anyone and I can just say what I feel. And that's probably one of the great things about me being completely neutral uh, in this arena, that uh, you know, I'm just going to say it as I see it. Uh, and I think that probably is a benefit to you guys. Because remember, the thing is, I'm here for you guys. And I'm here for no one other than you guys. Uh, so I want you really to understand that side of it. So I'm very proud of that side too. Uh, and I hope you understand the honesty that I'll give you guys. Uh, it can cost me my honesty. Uh, I'm being totally honest there. It can cost me my honesty uh, with certain things that I don't want to discuss. Um, but I am always here for you guys. So... Um, so let's talk about this, what I think uh, is coming up in the future with uh, Sony. Now, as you know, or with Canon, as you know, I really am pushing for an articulated screen. Now, I know a lot of people, I even discussed this with Aaron today. Um, I really uh, would love to have an articulating screen. And that's one thing that I really am hanging out for. Now, I know a lot of people say they don't want an articulating screen, but the beauty is with these articulating screens, like when I had the GH5, I could just open that up or keep it closed. If you don't want it open like an articulating screen, um, 
you can leave it closed. So that's one of the beauties of this system with a fully articulating screen is that you can keep it closed if you don't need it. And that's one of the great benefits about it. Now there's people talking out there about um, it may weaken the camera or it might affect the waterproofing or it might make the body a little bit bigger. But you, it's been proven before the GH5 is a great body size. I really did like that size of body. And the fold out screen, I haven't heard really anyone talking about there where that has had detrimental effects on the body of the camera itself. So I think saying that it can affect the body is really irrelevant and it's not true. Um, I don't understand why Sony don't give us the fully articulating screen. Yes, they have gone this way uh, with the new Sony A6400, but I think it's flawed. And the reason why I say it's flawed is because you can't put a microphone up at the top. Now, yes, you can get adapters and things like that, but I don't want to run around with adapters. I just want a camera that works. And I know Camera Conspiracy says the same thing. If you watch him, he mentioned me today, and thanks so much for that, mate. I really appreciate the shout up you gave me, and also you did in a recent video not long ago. It really means a lot to me when YouTubers support one another. Um, and I certainly follow you every video you put up, and you'll know that because you can see I always uh, put a question in or say thanks. Uh, so he also has the same feeling as me as well, that he's dying to get a articulating screen in a camera. This is okay, but it doesn't work if you want to do true vlogging, which means put your microphone on the top. Um, plus, it's also a little bit blocked also by the, the top of the camera. So it, it really is, it's a flawed design, and I don't understand Sony for not giving us one that folds out. Now, I know a lot of the photography-based people are going to say, you don't need an articulating screen, and I disagree because I do believe now that any camera that's released has to be a hybrid camera. Now, why I'm saying that is because you have to have video and stills. The days of having just a stills camera are numbered, and you may not agree with me in that regard, but if you look at the way kids are growing up now, it's all about video, it's all about Instagram stories, it's all about sharing on Facebook Live videos. Everything is moving to stills and video. So any camera maker that just goes down the photography line now is doomed to failure. And I can tell you that's what's going to happen. Um, it's definitely going to have an effect later on down the line. Now, some people keep saying that Canon have the patent for that articulating screen. I don't believe that's true. Olympus have just used it. Um, Panasonic have got it. They haven't in their full frame, but Panasonic have got it. I don't think I've ever seen anywhere where it's it's not allowed, and I don't think that's true. Even the camera A series have had it. Um, so I don't think that's true at all. Uh, and all they would have to do is have some design change that would allow it to come out. And you know how all these patents work. So I don't believe that's true. I think it's just that they don't want to give it to us. I think it's just that no one wants to give us this perfect camera because they might be afraid that we're not gonna buy anything else. So they're all holding back and it really gets up my nose and I hate it. Um, and I think it's something that they really should change. When I saw the first EOS camera released, I thought, wow, that's fantastic. But then when I saw the specs of it, I was disappointed. The, the crop factor uh, alone is very, very disappointing and it doesn't have IBIS is also very, very disappointing. And mostly too, because it doesn't have the dual card slots. And so even Canon has held back some of these features as well. Um, Sony have just announced the A6400, and, and like I said, that's got a flip-up screen, but I believe that design is flawed. Some of you may not agree with me, but, but I think it is. It's based on an old sensor that's out. Yes, it's got much better autofocus, but it's still not what I would call a, a, an amazing innovation that they've done with their previous cameras. And, and, you know, and it's a little bit disappointing, and I've mentioned to you before that uh, that camera has certainly disappointed me from a blogger's perspective, which is that they've aimed that camera at. Uh, and I think it's a little bit annoying how they've done that camera. So, but anyway, you can let me know in the comments box down below whether you think uh, I'm wrong in that regard, but I have feelings myself about what I need as a, a YouTuber, as a professional working photographer. Um, so these are interesting things that I'd love to talk to you about. So. I'm hoping that the new Sony does bring out a fully articulating screen. So I really do hope that happens. I'm doubtful though now that they've released the A6400 and I've got a feeling that might be the only one that has the fold up screen. I hope I'm wrong. But anyway, that's, that's something that I do really 
well, get get some, I'm, I'm a bit angry about it. But anyway, let's m continue on. I just want to talk to you today about the new EOS RP because this is quite interesting. Because for the first time, if these specs are true, now at the moment it's only a CR1, which is a low rated spec, but it's going to be interesting because I've heard this a number of times and often these specs tend to uh, come out true. So I'd love to know if, if this comes out, I think Canon may have, Put a shot at Sony and, and this is an interesting discussion that I wanted to have with you guys about this because if it's true and it is at the price range that they're talking about I think it might change a few people's perspectives now remember and this this is what I want to talk about before I go on to the specifications of this the average user that goes into a shop and this is trust me this is dead true uh, I've taught for years, I taught for years in uni, and I know how people uh, think when they're buying cameras, and I give people advice all the time. The average new user that comes into the marketplace does not give a hoot about IBIS, they do not care about dual cards, and they don't care about a lot of those features uh, that are there. What All they care about is usually the name brand, and, and they care, now I do think they care about having an articulated screen because they're used to seeing themselves in a phone and, and the first thing that all these kids and that do is they'll look at their phone. Now if Sony don't have a camera that has that ability to, for them to see themselves when they're doing all of their YouTube stuff, all of their Instagram stuff, they're not going to buy the camera. And this is what Sony have to be very, very careful about and this is somewhere where Canon uh, particularly have been very very smart and this is what I wanted to talk to you about about the specifications with this new camera so let's go over and have a look at this because I thought I'd share this uh, page with you and I'd love you guys in the live chat to, to chime in with this as well um, and I hope I'm not upsetting a lot of the, the you know Sony people that follow me but You've always got to broaden your horizons and have a look. I don't think I'm going to switch. I'm not going to switch. But it, it certainly is interesting, and I'd love to know your perspective, what you think about this. Uh, so this rumor, this EOS RP specifications, it, like I said, is a CR1. Uh, and they're saying that it's obviously going to be called the RP and a lot of people are throwing jokes like it's the rest in peace and all this sort of stuff. But let's look at what they're saying here for... Uh, the specifications on this camera. Now, I don't know how true this is, but some of them are very, very interesting because they're saying the camera weight is only gonna be 400 grams. Now, that is incredibly light. Now, if that's true, this may be based in similar materials to the EOS M50. Um, and that's probably not a bad thing in a lot of ways because if you're talking about a, an entry-level uh, camera that's more for bloggers or vloggers, uh, this is really quite good, and I'd love to know what you think about this. Um, so they're saying it could be 400 grams. Now clearly if that's going to be the case, it's going to have plastics instead of um, being uh, like a magnesium body or whatever else is there. Um, it's going to have a side articulated monitor with a comfortable grip. Uh, so again, that's, that sounds good. Uh, the Canon ergonomics are usually quite good. Um, it's also saying it's going to have a new 24 megapixel sensor, CMOS sensor. Expect the same performance similar to the EOS R. Now I've tried the EOS R, I haven't taken it home, but I've tried it in the shop. The, the still side of the EOS R is, is really quite nice. Um, lovely in fact, uh, particularly if you put it with that amazing glass. If you put it with the amazing glass, the results are amazing. The 50 millimeter, yes, it's a very, very expensive lens, but the 50 millimeter 1.2 is incredible. Some of those lenses are absolutely outstanding. Um, and if you put that, sensor with decent glass it is very very good the the video still is flawed if you count the crop factor in it but i'm, I'm not going to talk about that in this case yet because i'm going to talk about how this may be a competitor for the a6400 and, and this is where i want to keep going and, and talking a little bit uh down um also down here it says no touch bar so they've got rid of that ridiculous touch bar which was just crazy. I tried it and I hated it. I didn't like it at all. It would be far better if they get rid of it or just put a, a joystick on there, which like every other camera is now doing. I think that's one area where the design team wasn't thinking very clearly or they thought it might be a good idea. And I haven't really heard anyone that likes it. So I'm glad they've got rid of that. Um, it's uh, So no touch bar and no top monitor. And I don't think you need a top monitor anyway. I mean, it's a good feature, but I would prefer, like they've said, 
to get an extra dial. And I think that's great. If you look at my A9, um, having the extra dial is far more beneficial to me than having an extra, um, is that gonna focus? There we go. I much prefer having the extra dial than having that other thing there because it's, it really is interesting. I like that and that's why I've loved the Fuji camera so much because I love all the ergonomics and dials and stuff like that. I love that analog feel to a lot of these cameras. So lose, I, I don't mind not having a top monitor because I don't need it anyway. I can always see through the camera what I'm using. Uh, I'd be more happy if it has that extra dial, which it says it does. G'day, Michael, just noticed you popped in. Um, standard ISO, 100 to 40,000 ISO. Um, IAF now uh, supports servo AF and video AF. So they've, they, it looks like they're gonna improve the IAF to work in both servo AF and video AF, which is great. So they've improved that, which was a, a flaw in the original model. Uh, dual pixel AF speed is 0 0.05 seconds. And I do think now there is no difference now between uh, the Canon dual pixel and the Sony uh, AF system. I, I, in fact, probably the A9, has overtaken a uh, dual pixel now. Now Canon may be able to make that better in, in some of these new cameras, but I think the days where you said Canon AF was better, but clearly the Canon uh, autofocus, the dual pixel autofocus and the Sony autofocus uh, uh, say on par now easily, and they're both amazing. So you can no longer say one is, is better than the other, but the new tracking say with the A9, I think is gonna step it up that, that extra uh, difference um, but dual pixel is fantastic uh, USB-C and headphone jack are available battery charging while shooting uh, is supported so they're, they're having USB charging uh, uh, that's supported as well the other interesting thing here too they're saying that um, it's going to have Canon log HDMI clean output and you're going to get the 1.56 4k crop now that can be a downer but let me discuss this in a minute because if you're comparing this to the A6400, it gets interesting. Um, price, and this is the really interesting part. Price, they're saying, is going to be $1,300 United States dollars. Now, I don't know whether they're going to be able to hold to that, but if this is their entry model, they may be going to do a Sony here, like the A7 III, and really hit the market hard. And that might be what they're willing to do here. And this could be a very, very good marketing strategy if they do that. Uh, they may do exactly what Sony did with the a7 III, and I hope they do. I really do hope that they do this. Uh, they're also saying um, it, that we're really hoping it's priced uh, this aggressively. Um, and, but they're just saying, keep in mind that sometimes it may be lost in translation due to exchange. They're saying $1,300 is really aggressive for a full-frame camera. Early rumors peg the camera at $1,600 uh, United States dollars. And we're also told that the extension grip is a one centimeter thick plate to be installed in the ESRP. So it's gonna have a, an extension grip uh, as well. Now, before I talk about how this can go against the A6400, for instance, I, also, I just wanna talk about lenses, for instance. So if they could get this, say, around the $1,300, $1,500 mark, a lot of people then uh, have said in discussions with me, yes, but the ridiculous prices of lenses, but you don't have to get the crazy, uh, expensive lenses if you're starting in this. You can start with, th there's two lenses that I'll discuss with you. Um, there's two lenses I'll discuss. There's the 35 1.8 IS macro, uh, which I'll show you in a minute a review. Well, I'll show you that now. If you look at this lens, um, this is the, the 35 1.8 macro. The good part about this is it's also a macro, so you're getting two lenses uh, in one here. Uh, the reviews that I've looked at this actually say it's quite a nice lens. Um, uh, it does 17 centimeters distance for your macro. Uh, reviews tend to be very uh, or quite good from what I've seen. It, it looks quite nice and small on the camera itself. Um, it is image stabilized. Now Canon is saying that you get five stops on their image stabilization. So this is really interesting. Uh, in that case, so even though you're not getting IBIS in the camera, which is ideal, uh, the Canon stabilization does work quite well, and they're saying that you actually get five stops uh, from this lens. So this is one lens that you could get if you didn't want to spend a fortune uh, in that regard. And I think, uh, does it give costs down here? I think I did read somewhere where this was, 
uh, costs. I think it was six hundred dollars US or around that range. Let me just see if it mentions it. Um, the bokeh looked quite good if you're looking at the out of focus. Yes, it is not perfectly shaped bokeh, um, but it looks reasonably good. Um, I don't think it had the cost. I might be I have to see what it was. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I oh, know it's not. It's not saying there. I'm pretty sure that I read somewhere where. Oh, here you go. It does say there. Uh, it's saying if you're talking about pounds, it's um, 519 euro, 499 in the UK. I don't know how current this is, uh, and they're saying it's. Um, Sorry, it's uh, 4.99 in the US. I oh, regret. Thank you so much. Uh, he just said, and on Canon system, you can get the 70 to 200 2.8 without costing costing an arm and a leg. Yeah, true. Uh, thanks so much for that, regret. I really appreciate that donation. So it's saying it's 4.99 US, 5.19 euro, and 5.19 pounds. Uh, so that's what that costs. Now the other lens that you can get, uh, if you wanted to get in a bit cheaper. Obviously, if you're going to get these full frame lenses, they're very, very expensive. But I'm just talking about as a starter lenses that you could get. Uh, is the 24105 f4 again? The the Canon 24105 f4 is a beautiful lens. The full frame lens is really a great lens. So if we talk about this, um, this is a great overall lens. And if you look at the reviews of this lens, uh, they actually say it's quite amazing. And they do say in here that. Uh, you get around about five stops of um, uh, stabilization. Uh, and I'm not going to go through the whole article, but uh, you can see sort of the size we're dealing with here. Uh, the results from this review look really quite outstanding, look beautiful in fact. Uh, the 24 to 105 is a great travel lens, it's a great all around lens, just like the Sony one is as well. Um, but uh, really interesting. Uh, it is only f4 though, that's why having that 50 1.8 could also be uh, an advantage as well. Um, fits look nice on, on a camera, you can see it's not too large, um, but overall really really nice looking lens. So that's two options you could get straight away without breaking the bank. Um, and again if you did want to go that way you could also get the adapters if you wanted to use Canon's normal lenses. Uh, and it sounds, you, you know, like from what I've seen in the reviews, the, it, the system works quite well. Um, fantastic. So that's really interesting if you look at those specs uh, and, and the lenses that you can buy right from the ground up. So you don't have to spend a fortune on the f1.2 lenses. The beauty is you can if you want to though. Um, so let's talk about this, how it can affect Sony. And this is where I want to talk to you about this. now. Yes, it is dearer than what an A6400 is, but the interesting thing here is if they can get this at $1,300, which the rumors are saying is a possibility, I'm not sure if that's a possibility, you're getting a full frame camera at that price. Now this is where it gets really interesting because if they can do it at that price, it's not much of a difference, a real massive difference to go from the A6400 to getting a full frame camera uh, at $1,300 that has an articulating screen that's full frame. Now yes, there's a, a massive crop, but if you take the crop factor involved with the A6400 and this, they're basically the same. They're Super 35 cameras. So if you take that side out of it, what you're getting extra here over the A6400 is you're getting a full frame camera with good focus. It may not be better than the A6400, but it's gonna be very, very good. We know that with dual pixel. Um, and you're getting a fully articulating screen. Uh, and you get, and then, the, like I said, the most important thing here is you're getting a full frame camera. So if you're dealing about having a, a hybrid type camera, this is better than what you're getting with the A6400 because uh, it's not much more expensive and you're also getting uh, full frame if you're dealing with stills, which is far better. So this is really interesting and, and it really is quite interesting if Canon can do this and I think they may hurt Sony on this because I think if you if I for instance was going into a camera shop and looking at these two cameras I can tell you I would buy that Canon before I would get this Sony a6400 so this is really interesting um, but you know let what, what do you think about it and I, I really would like to know in the chat what you think about this um, remember the 4k is still not used much at this stage it's mostly 1080p most people join coming in 
are not like us that know all this sort of stuff, so they're not going to give two hoots about the Sony uh, being better 4K than what the Canon uh, is. They're going to look at the 1080p video because that's all they're going to care about. Because the average user does not care about that. And this is what I'm saying to you. It, this may change the game a little bit in the lower end. Sony have shot themselves in the foot because they're not releasing any APS-C glass. And I, don't, I do not understand why Sony are not releasing APS-C glass. Um, and I think it's just it's stupid. And I really do think they're being nuts by not releasing that glass. Canon have really up their glass game here. I know they're just starting, but they're full frame glass. The 51.2 is outstanding. Uh, if you look at these lenses that we're dealing with here, uh, if you look at the lenses that Canon have announced straight away, that there's a 35 1.8, there's the 51.2, that 51.2 is incredible. Uh, the 24 1.4, the 28 to 70 is huge, but again, it's outstanding. And I did put up a uh, discussion the other day about the new glass that's being announced as well. There was an 85 1.2, for instance, and I've been hanging out for an 85 1.2 forever. Uh, I've always wanted that Canon lens. Um, so I'd love to know what you think about this in the chat below. I'm going to open up the live chat in a minute. We can have a discussion about it. But I'd love to know what you think about this. Like I said to you, I always want to come across and talk to you guys about all things that are happening in the industry as well. Uh, in fact, if Sony do not release a articulating screen, um, I may jump to get this for my YouTube channel. Even though it's got one card slot, it won't matter if I'm only shooting for me. Uh, and that could be where I would get that, uh, that camera. Um, and I, I would certainly think about it at that price. And, you know, I'm going to see what happens, obviously, with an A7000 and the A7S III that will come out. Hopefully that will meet my needs. Um, but if they don't bring out an articulating screen, this may be the only option that I have to doing my vlogging and YouTube videos. Um, so it's, you know, it's, it's really interesting. Um, oh, didn't I switch over? Let me just come back to that video to show those lenses. Uh, back here, in case because someone just said it didn't show up. Uh, 35 1.8 macro, uh, the 50 1.2, um, the 24 105, and uh, the 28 to 70 f2 lens. Um, like I said, Canon definitely are winning in the glass stake, that's for sure. Although I'm sure Sony will announce new glass as well, uh, but they, they probably have to start thinking about some of this fast glass just to show that they can do it. Uh, they have had the Sony manager talking about that to say there's no reason why the lens mount, they can't do it. Uh, but I'd like to know, you know, whether they can. But let's open up the chat because I'd be really curious to know um, what you think about this, guys. Um, very, very interesting announcement. And like I said, competition is good for all of us. Um, and I really, at, the, at this stage, I haven't really been that excited about anything. Uh, the, the Panasonics, I thought, were going to uh, excite me, but they really didn't with what they're offering. Um, the Nikon didn't really excite me that much. It, look, it's quite good quality, but, you know, I, I think it's, it's just not there. It's a first release. Uh, this seems to be that it may interest me a little bit more because I would love that fold-out screen. Uh, so let's see what people are saying. Uh, most people are just saying hi early on there. Um, so let me skip past where everyone's just saying hi. Um, Shikyu said, I'm torn between Canon and Panasonic. Sony cameras depreciate in value too fast for my comfort. Um, well, they've been holding their value a little bit better now. Uh, but yes, they have been devalued, I suppose. It, you can't win because I've been asking them to release new cameras. Uh, if they keep releasing new cameras constantly like they have been, the, the, they do devalue. Um, and that was one great thing about when I shot Nikon. Uh, the cameras did hold their value for a very, very long time. And that was one great thing that when I sold them, I lost very little money at all. Uh, the A9, for instance, when it was released here in Australia, it sold for $7,000. And within 12 months, it had dropped down to four. Um, so yes, I, I can understand what you're saying. Um, Norik said, Sony deserves to get sh uh, fire, uh, shots fired at them. Um, Hope Cannon uh, shots. Hope Cannon shoots a cannon. At them. 
Oh, uh, Scott said the 400 gram weight and some of the other specs seem more likely to be the M5 or the M6 revision. Uh, thought it would be really interesting and surprising if it turned out to be a 400 gram full frame camera. I know that this is interesting and, and these are things that I'm not sure about and a lot of the Canon users may chime in and let me know whether they think that's possible. It might be though that they change the materials and, and this is the interesting thing like the M5, um, we, we just don't know. Um, Lucas said flip screen is an, is an annoying on a gimbal and handheld shooting for video. I, I really love it Lucas. So I can't agree with you there. Uh, if you've got a good gimbal, uh, having the flip out screen on the side is no problem at all. Remember though, the beauty is with this system though, you don't need to flip the screen out if you don't want it. This is what I keep saying to people. Having a fold out screen, if you don't want it to fold out, you keep it closed. So the argument really is not there. Um, Andrew said, hot shoe on the side of the screen on top for pros and cons. Uh, eye line better if it flip up uh, screen safety folds out better uh, also more angles out uh, so you are you saying it it's better if it folds up uh, Limunk said yes I think it's flawed and they naming it an a6400 seems telling how confident they are of the camera mm. I, I am not happy with that release but anyway a lot of people are but I'm certainly not um, hero said just wanted to say greetings I'm saying this from 14 minutes in the past <laughs> Uh, Sagan says, next time I'll buy a 4K camcorder for video. Interesting. The only issue with the camcorder is though, Sagan, it doesn't have that full frame look or Super 35 look. Uh, that's the issue with those. Uh, I, I do love the full frame look uh, for video. Um, Jason said, if it's light with flippy screen, Camera Conspiracy is about to jump over it. I know he'll love it uh, if it's true and it, it is released that way. Can't wait to see a video on that one. Um, Jason said, flippy. Uh, Scott said the M50 uh, with nothing is uh, 335 grams. Mm, interesting. Laugh out loud, camera conspiracy is going to love this video. We always love each other's videos, I think. Michael said shot fires, bam. Nice to see you in here, Mike. B&B Films said hello, guys. Lamunk said, yep, want those dials, and Sony never give more dials uh, to peasants owning to APS-C cameras like me. Um, yeah, well, it, it is a, a bit of a bummer that they're not giving any love to the AS, uh, APS-C cameras. I really do hope they look after the users in that regard. I'm just hoping they don't treat them like the A-series, you know, that they just have been left, the A99 and stuff, where they've been left without anything. I can understand you have to do that sometimes, uh, but they have re just released an A6400, so hopefully they'll announce a new APS-C glass as well soon. Um, Andrew said, wait, great, but weatherproofing. Uh, Still versus good love for weight, uh, 120 uh, FDH Stone Age cameras even have that. You're talking about um, weatherproofing. Um, Brad said, howdy, just joined, hoping uh, they learn from the M50 USA disappointments and put 4K PDAF, yeah, uh, well let's hope they did because of the way that they held back on the PDAF on the uh, 4K is pretty bad, so let's hope they have fixed that. Uh, Andrew, Canon won't give you 4K. I don't think they will with uh, full focus, but let's hope that the, the, you never know. I mean, I don't think they will either. Michael says, what? Uh, Sony get the them A7S III for $500. <laughs> um, um, I wonder what will be uh, the kit lens for this affordable camera. Yeah, well, that will be interesting. They haven't made any statement on that yet, but it certainly will be interesting to see what they say about that, uh, and that will be interesting. Um, Scott said, yeah, a lot of those specs are exactly what the M5 already is. Um, interesting. Uh, Jason said, Canon striking back is exact is exciting and scary. Like I said, guys, competition is good for us all. And this is what we should be hoping for. When you get the so-called fanboys saying they hope camera companies die, they are nuts. Because if that happens, Sony won't innovate. Panasonic won't innovate. No one will. Canon won't innovate. And we don't want that. We don't want that at all. At all. Canon left out the specs, uh, one-inch sensor. <laughs> Uh, um, Costa said, good morning from Greece. Happy to see you live. It's good to see you in here, Costa. Um, I can't, it can't be APS-C at that price. If it's APS-C, it has to have flagship features. I don't think it will. I think this is going to be full frame. Rikrat said, if it's 1300, it's around the price of the A6500. 
Um, BNB Films said full frame 1080p, laugh out loud. Um, the return of Canon. Jun Su uh, says, Michael says, yes, I think this camera is made to go up against the A6400. Yeah, I think that's why I put this up, Michael, because I think this is there to tackle that market. Uh, and Canon may do a Sony with the A7 III and really go out all guns blazing at this, be prepared to lose a little bit of money to get people jumping on into that system. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. Remember, camera makers do not make much money on the body. They make it on the lenses. So this could be a really interesting um, ploy by Canon. Um, what else have we got? Uh, Junchu said, the new glass is just wow. Yeah, the Canon glass is amazing. That was one thing I was always envious of when I moved to, uh, when I had, was a Nikon shooter. And also when I was a, uh, well, I'm a Sony shooter, I was always envious of the Canon glass in the fact of particularly the 85 1.2, which I always wanted. Um, b, &B Films says, uh, Fish, oh, hang on, I better read this first. Um, Brad said, uh, another thing I'm thinking about is the Canon IQ uh, is there. With PDAF 4K, this price point will be really cut into the BM. Uh, yeah, well, it would cut into that Blackmagic camera market. As I'm thinking, the crop aspect ratios will be comparable. Well, it's going to end up being an APS-C crop if you take if they keep that 1.5 crop in. It's basically going to be APS-C uh, crop there. Um, BMB Film says I'm waiting on the Nikon Z24 to 72.8. It will come. Um, Sony Color Science in wedding, uh, fully mixed with magenta, uh, that looks hot. I've had no problem with the Sony Color Science at all. Uh, I'm really happy with it, and it's getting better and better with every release. So, uh, Sizzleman said, depends on the video spec. 720p at 120 frames per second is a deal breaker for me. Well, that's what we have to wait and just see uh, what it is. I don't use 120. Uh, I only ever use really 60 because I don't want to slow it down that much for me doing weddings and things like that. So 60p is, is ample for me. But everyone wants different things. Uh, Tony says, hey David, we can't see the products you're showing. Yeah, hopefully I'll fix that up. To be honest, uh, as a Canon user, I'm not getting my hopes up. They find a way to disappoint us somehow. Well, let's hope they do, um, Junshu. I'm really hoping they do uh, please you all. Uh, Langston said, good evening um, as well. Julian says, wow, those Canon lenses are awesome. Might have to look at that Canon, laugh out loud. Um, Recrat said, if it was uh, out at $1,300 when I got my A6500, I might have went Canon instead of Sony because full frame for a similar price. And this is the interesting thing. Um, and I'd love to know later, guys, in the chat down below, do you think that Canon could possibly do this? Do you, do you think that they could put that price out at a similar price to the A6500 and you're getting full frame for that at that, co at that, that cost price point? I'd love to know what you think about that. Um, what, uh, Luke says, I agree not enough praise has been given for, uh, to Canon for the overall quality and speed of the glass. Probably the best release in less than one year ever. I agree, Luke, that the problem was the body let them down. The, the original body that they brought out let them down. The glass is outstanding, and if Canon bring out a really high-end EOS camera that can match that full-frame glass and you put dual slots in there, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a winner. And I really do hope it happens. Uh, the glass is outstanding. I, I can't deny that. The 51.2 that I used was unbelievably sharp, one of the sharpest lenses I've ever used. Um, Michael said, <laughs> David, that's blasphemy. It's illegal for uh, no Canon for you. Laugh out loud. Uh, Jason says, I haven't seen Canon actually try for years. This is exciting. Lanson said, sounds like uh, I missed a bit. Um, b, b Film says, just a bit. Dave says, uh, $1,300 for latest Canon full frame insane. Too good to be true. Yeah, I hope it is true. It'll be interesting. Lanson said, price drops are consequences of a frequent release cycle. And that is exactly true, Langston. What do you think about Tamron 28 to 75? I love that lens, mate. That is one of my favorite lenses. Uh, I adore that lens. It changed my thinking. I only shot primes mostly before that lens came out. Uh, fantastic for the cost. And I can't wait for Tamron to release a uh, 70 to 200. 
Uh, this is exciting uh, and all we need a pro body, 4K60 no crop, IBIS, please Canon. Hopefully it comes for you mate. Troy said, well, uh, you can get great glass and uh, media, oops, where was that? Um, where were we? Oh, I've lost it now. Uh, I don't know where it was. I'll have to skip down. Sorry, Troy, I've lost it. Um, where were we? Ah, oh, there we go. Troy, well, you can have great glass and mediocre cameras, Canon, or great cameras and mediocre glass, Sony. Um, one DX mirrorless will be a game changer for two uh, for 2025. Um, well, the the and I have to agree. The most important thing you can ever buy is glass. Glass is by far the thing that you will keep for years and years and years. Good glass does not date, and that's the interesting thing about this. So if you buy really good glass, it should last you for 10 years or more, even longer. I mean, I've known people that have had it nearly all their life. So good glass should last you forever. The bodies are replaceable, the glass isn't. Um, Gary says, I think that Canon's plan is to push the sale of their new glass. That is why the price is so good on the RP camera. And it may be, Gary, that might be what they're trying to do here. Um, Bradley says the 70 to 200 2.8 stubby looks very interesting. Uh, Do possibility? Yeah, it does actually. I I posted if you if you want to check the other Canon lenses I showed the other day, uh, I put it down in a couple of videos before. You'll be able to check, but that, it is very small looking at the uh, the pictures of that lens, and it does look really interesting. I don't know if it's if it is that or whether it's just a picture that's making it that size. Um, Langston says, I'm a happy can I'm happy Canon is keeping things interesting. Let's see if this leads to less angry Canon shooters uh, runs. Charles said something to think about. 4K60 creates a lot of heat. If they change material to reduce weight, what would that mean for insides would overheat? Uh, would possibly mean it won't be able to shoot 4K properly. That could be the case, and we know that may be the case. Um, we, we have to wait and see. We just don't know uh, what the possibility is, but I'm not, I am not upset if I get a 4K camera that can shoot for me for 10 to 15 minutes because I don't shoot 4K 60p for very long at all. I'm not going to shoot a whole wedding at that. I only need it occasionally. The second that I'm doing things like weddings, uh, ceremonies, reception speeches, I'm, I'm usually doing it in, in um, 10, 1080p because I don't need it that much resolution but I'm shooting the minutes where I'm only capturing say 10 seconds of 4k footage and I'd love to be able to shoot that 4k 60 for that um, Douglas said still not pro level I wish I could stay with Canon but I have to move to Sony yeah they definitely need to release a pro level Canon uh, Douglas and I agree with you uh, I think Canon probably will do that sometime this year though uh, Michael has said Sony will drop a nuclear bomb on Canikin. <laughs> oh god Jen Chu said if Panasonic couldn't figure out 4k 60 without a crop there's zero chance Canon will uh, Michael said, "Hi, Dave. There should be no issues because I was not. F if, if 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 it was not for Sony, we would not have mirrorless and uh, set of options. We do exactly, Michael. And you do have to thank Sony for that. I agree totally." Uh, Michael said, "It was Sony that didn't pay attention to the icons who were not innovating and used available tech, and then moved forward with new ideas." Uh, Michael said, I love it. I'm about to get a $150 full frame camera at the end of all of this. Which one's that, Michael? <laughs> what can you buy for a $150 full frame? Um, my, maybe Canon will use Sony sensors this time instead of Canon. I don't think so. But you never know one day, though. Um, Michael said, it's easy to be critical when you're standing still, not being part of the innovation. Sony was brave enough to make the mistakes and learn from them. Casper um, says, way too late. G'day, Casper. Anything about the bit rates? No, nothing there yet at all about the bit rates. Um, I'm hoping they up it. Uh, I'm also hoping Sony up the bit rates as well. That was disappointing, really, with the A6400, that the bit rates never got touched. Um, the X-T3, for instance, has killed the Sony if you're talking about bit rates. Um, 
Langston says, I think Cannon could do it at a loss. Uh, it is a loss leader if they think they can push the glass. And that's the interesting thing about this. They may do that. They may run the camera at a loss to push the glass. It, it's, it's a definite possibility. Um, Michael said, so that's when people start calling people childish names online like fanboy, being defensive, envious and jealous of Sony's innovation. I shot with the Sony A A580 SLT. Uh, Gerald said, vloggers will flock to this. Just hope they can afford the lenses to go with that cheap camera. Yeah, and we discussed that earlier, Gerald. There is a couple of decent cam uh, lenses that aren't too expensive. Plus, remember, you can get the adapter and use the old glass there as well. Um, Michael said, um, David, it's 100% yes, Canon can do it for 1300 to 1400 The question is, will they? Yep, yeah, and that's the interesting thing, Michael. I agree. Um, Limox says, I'm not sure if they're going to sell it at the same price as the A6500 with full frame, but maybe a couple of hundred dollars more. Interesting. Um, 42 Pro says, late to the stream but still awake. Um, NC USA, welcome to the screen. Ben and said, if Canon give us a 1300 full frame, uh, it will have no screen and no SD card slots. <laughs> oh dear. Brad said, another market uh, this could really dig into is the Twitch gaming streamers. Rumors of power over USB, lightweight and possible clean HDMI out with improved eye tracking would be great for a live stream. Yep, true. Um, Michael said, so it's Sony who lead the way and we all will benefit from them stepping forth and being brave, leading the mirrorless. Just please don't block the screen and forget the audio. Um, Luke says, um, when I'm feeling naughty, I think about my A99 too. I love it. <laughs> That's funny, Luke. Um, Andrew said, uh, can the pans, is it Panasonic, Dream Combo, Ibis, usability, uh, tech lenses, if they're watching, uh, it'll be a mediator for a price. Uh, can be pants on. I'm not sure what that means. I'm having trouble reading it. Uh, Michael said, Dave is right because I even keep a uh, glass of the camera. I don't even have some people give me or sell me old glass for cheap. Yeah, look, glass is, is what it's all about, guys. You, you will get a far better result. If you're struggling for money, you will get a far better result buying a cheaper body and buying better glass. Look, there's no doubt about that at all. Uh, if you bought a beautiful prime lens uh, that's, you know, like say the, the, the Canon 50 or, or even Sony, if you're talking about, um, you know, the 85 1.4 or the 85 1.8, uh, you'll get far better results if that's all you can afford and buy a cheaper Sony body. Far better results. Uh, and that's one thing you have to understand. The bodies are disposable. Uh, the lenses aren't. The lenses will stay with you probably over your lifetime. Um, Gerald said, uh, Canon is looking to make their profits off the lenses and then folks will be locked into Canon for the future. Uh, the Cameron is a loss leader. Yeah, it may be Gerald, and that's the interesting thing about this one. Um, Scott said, they probably have the capability, uh, they make the sensors and have sold cheap larger sensor cameras like the uh, APS uh, C M100. This will probably not have an EVF or many buttons at that weight. And that's the interesting thing, it may not have an EVF. And there is a discussion about that in DP Review that it may not have an EVF. Uh, Tim said, uh, we need liquid cooling solutions for cameras and how to handle 4K 60p. Bradley says, finger crossed for high dynamic range and high ISO performance. Uh, Recrat said, do you think Canon and Nikon will both, relief pro will both, both release pro level bodies uh, in 2020 for the Olympics. I think Canon will release one this year, later this year. Yes, definitely. Nikon may not until next year. Uh, so 2020, yes, possibly for Nikon. I think Canon will release a, a, um, uh, a camera later this year. I, I would be very surprised if Canon don't. The lenses that they've got at this stage do not make sense with the body that they've, they've already got, the two bodies that are gonna be announced. They have to bring out a high res version of this somewhere along the line, and I think it will be reasonably soon. Uh, the lenses just don't make sense. Nikon, on the other hand, have already got a higher end body. It's already capable. The Z7 is a high end camera, apart from the fact it doesn't have the dual card slots. So I don't think Nikon will, uh, but I think Canon will. Um. Bradley says, oh, I've already read that. Fingers crossed for high dynamic range. Uh, Troy says, I think the 24 megapixel sensor is typical Canon. Spin on somewhat old tech. 
but cheap and decent performance. Sony can just drop the A7 III to 1500 to make it interesting. And Sony may do that. They did drop the price. Oh, no, they didn't. There was rumours they dropped the price the other day, but it turned out that it wasn't the A7 III. Um, Elias says uh, the 15 to 35 f 2.8 Canon R lens will be the kit for this. Uh, it'll combat the 4K crop nicely to give you a 24-7 equivalent. Interesting. Uh, Michael says, all I'm saying is after the dust uh, clears with these full frame cameras, camera wars, I might have a shot at getting 150 camera from someone. <laughs> oh, I love it. Venom said, that's exactly why I should stay away from Canon mirrorless full frame. The RF uh, lenses can't be used with anything else, uh, not even their other cameras. Um, and 42 Pro says, I hope that the full frame RP is a great release for Canon because it will push Sony and others to stay aggressive on camera design and releases. Uh, in high competition markets, the consumer wins. And this is exactly right. This is exactly why I like to discuss these sort of things with you guys. Yes, this is often a Sony-centric channel, but I do love to discuss other things with you as well. And I do love to be honest about where Sony could improve. Um, and this could really hurt the A6400 if this is priced at $1,300. Uh, and I think it's really interesting, and I'd love to know your opinion about this down below, uh, because I think it's fascinating. And I think the whole industry is becoming fascinating now, where it, it's actually going. And you know, I think, like I've said to you all before, that competition is great for us all. Uh, it really is. And, you know, and I hope you understand and appreciate me coming from this side uh, and discussing things about you from uh, another angle. Um, and I think it's really exciting, and it's certainly something that I may look into in the future for something for vlogging for me, if this is the only camera out there with an articulating screen that meets my needs. Um, I'm hoping Sony answers it, but they may not. Um, and that's about all, guys. So that's all I wanted to discuss with you for today. Uh, don't forget, I've got my live show on Friday coming up. Um, so come uh, join me on that. Uh, really only join me if you are from the Sony side of things though, uh, because that is very Sony centric, that uh, Friday chat. We had a discussion this morning on Aaron's channel, which was more open where it talks about things in general. So please check Aaron J. Anderson's uh, site if you wanna watch that video. We had a discussion this morning. That's gonna be every Wednesday for you guys in the UK and in Europe, uh, in the US. Uh, so check that if you haven't watched it. We had some really in uh, interesting discussions about the Panasonic S1. Uh, this morning uh, and we also went through some tips and things like that we talked about gray balance uh, all a whole stack of things lighting for video we discussed that as well uh, so check that on Aaron's channel next Wednesday it'll be back on my channel so uh, if you haven't uh, watched that please watch that and subscribe to Aaron uh, to see it live on there let me just answer a few more of these before I go um, do you think um, E-mount can ever have a decent IBIS in comparison to Canon, Nikon, and Panasonic with the wider lens diameter. Well, I haven't got any, I, I can tell you how it works with me. I hand hold the Sony cameras and get quite good results, but I am very, very steady with holding the camera, and I find the IBIS works quite well for me, uh, particularly if I use a stabilized lens. Um, it probably never will compete with something like the um, Panasonic, and uh, the Olympus. But that's often due to the size of the sensor. It's got much more room that it can move around inside there. We haven't seen that the, uh, say the Nikon IBIS is any better than what Sony have, have been offering. And we certainly haven't got any uh, results yet where it says that the Canon um, with just their lens IBIS is any better. So I think the Sony IBIS is good enough. Um, I mean, it could be better, yes. I'd love it to be like the Panasonic GH5 and the Olympus, but I'm not sure we can get that. Um, Gerald said, I think Canon talk of doom and gloom was just to lull their competitors to sleep <laughs> while they zeroed in and tried to capture the low end market and the full frame market. Could be brilliant strategy, maybe Gerald. Um, Michael says, I totally agree, Michael, uh, and Sony would be the company to do it. Um, if Sony comes back and drops the A7 III to $1,500 to $1,600, it's game over. Lemunk said, it's actually exciting for them to fight it out like this. It is exciting. Uh, Barbara says, um, they did drop the price on the a7 III. If you trade in a lens and camera, you get to trade in plus 200. Oh, okay, so that's how it worked, did it? Mark saying, hi from Thailand. It's always interesting hearing what manufacturers are bringing out, only to be disappointed after. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, 
Rickrat said, under an hour, this is certainly a really short stream. It is a short stream for me. I'm going to go and get dinner, though. Kerry will be waiting for me. Michael said, have a good one. Uh, Lemonk said, have a great day. Uh, Canon eye autofocus, uh, but with a 3.275 crop. Uh, all right, guys, that's it. Uh, Michael just said, um, Dave, I'm going to do some poking around and see what's available with the uh, small tech. Uh, there was a camera... There was a Canon IS series back in 2009 with IBIS that was 350. <laughs> all right, guys, look, it's been a pleasure talking to you all. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, chat from a different perspective than I normally do. Um, and apart from that, leave your comments down below. I'd number, love to know what you all think about this. Uh, and I'll see you all, uh, particularly on Friday, for the next live chat. Catch you all, guys. See you all soon. Bye for now.